Hello and welcome to Nidhranya YouTube channel. You're watching another episode of the Game in a Nutshell series designed for explaining the board game rules. My name is Branislav Berec and in this video we're going to learn how to play Factory 42, game designed by Ren Multamaki and published by Dragon Dawn Productions. And in this game you will be a dwarven society trying to produce goods requested by the dwarven bureaucratic government. So there might be some surprises in the game. Uh, it's a semi-cooperative game, which means players try to work together to get all these orders completed. However, only one of those players can win the game. Before we get started, let me tell you that all the components you will see in this tutorial video are early stage of the prototype components, so components and art is not final yet. So let's get started. To set the game up for a standard game, use this side of the game board. For an advanced game or a full game with the expansions, use this side of the game board. In this video I will explain the full game with these two additional action spaces. Most of the setup procedure for both variants are the same, so place all the material cubes on this supply board. And the supply of materials is meant to be limited. Now take two cubes of each material, including this magic, and drop them all at once into this bureaucracy tower. Then, whatever falls out is then returned back to the supply. But this bureaucracy tower is designed so that some of the cubes will remain inside that tower and those are never taken out intentionally. So if possible, don't move that tower at all. Those resources, which are inside the tower, are basically circulating somewhere inside this government bureaucracy system and they may become suddenly available later in the game. Then take this small spiking bag, take one marble, gold, beer and magic and then two pieces of every other resource and place them all into the spiking bag. Keep the bag somewhere next to the game board. Place these six rail cars next to the top of the game board Steam marker to the zero space of this steam track. Shuffle these five decks of cards separately and place them next to the game board. Take this deck of event cards and draw five of them face down to this space. And you can return all the remaining event cards back to the game box. Then each player takes a player board. All seven workers of one color in a two and a three player game and only six workers in a four player game. Randomly choose the starting player who will get this first player token and all players place their scoring markers to the zero space of the scoring track. The game is played over six rounds and these event cards can work as a counter and each round has four phases. In the first phase you will draw cards. You will draw government orders and inventions and you will also replace the market card with a new card from the deck. In the second phase, the workers phase, players will place their workers on these action spaces either on the game board or on their own player board, but they will not take those actions yet, they will just place the workers. Only in the third phase, players will resolve all the locations on the game board and on their player boards, starting with the location number one, then number two and so on and so forth. Then the phase number four is simply a cleanup phase. Now I will explain all those phases in a detail. In the first phase of each round, you will draw cards. In the first round of the game, draw as many government orders as there are players in the game. These cards show the resources required by the government, so this is what you will try to produce. In subsequent rounds, if any of these orders would be fulfilled and removed from this display, simply refill all the empty spaces. Then, for each new card in this display, take the resource cubes marked as the government allocation and place them in the common pool. You take the resources from this supply and the common pool is this area at the bottom of the bureaucracy tower, so this sort of a tray. So in the first round of the game you will add the resources from all four cards added to the display. In subsequent rounds, when orders will be fulfilled, you will only add the resources from the newly added cards. Then, if you play with the expansions, draw three cards from this invention deck. Unlike the government cards, if any of these invention cards will be acquired by players during the round, 
At the start of the next round, remove all the remaining cards in the display and always draw three new cards. Then take the top card from this market deck and place it on this space. There's always just one card over here, so at the start of the round replace the card from the previous round and place the new one. Finally, flip the top card from this event deck face up and follow the instructions on the card, it will have an impact on the current round only. At the start of the next round, remove that card and flip the new card face up and again follow the instructions. At the start of the sixth round, the last round of the game, there will only be one event card from the previous round, remove that card and then follow the instructions on the pre-printed event on the game board. This way these event cards work as the round counter. Note that you may remove or add certain resource cubes to the common pool, and this is the symbol for the common pool, and every time players gain something, they gain it from the general supply. Whenever you gain resources, you place them into your warehouse, which only has four spaces at the start of the game, you will be able to extend that warehouse with these two additional tiles. If your warehouse is full and you gain some resources, add them to the common pool. In the second phase of each round, players will place workers on action spaces on the game board or on their player board. Starting with the first player, players will take turns placing one of their workers and then continuing in a clockwise direction until all players place all their workers. You may place your worker on any empty space on the game board and each action area contains several worker spaces and one commissioner space. When you place the worker on these worker spaces, you always place them from the space one, then two and three and so on and so forth. And each player may obviously choose any action area they want. And when you place the worker on this commissioner spaces, you can place it there anytime you want. You don't have to wait until all the worker spaces are occupied. Actually, you may place the worker on the commissioner space even if there are no workers on the worker spaces. Action spaces on your player board are obviously reserved only for your own workers. When placing workers on these action spaces, don't resolve the locations yet, just place the workers there. In the third phase of each round, you will resolve all the locations on the game board and on the player boards. All the workers will take their actions, starting with the location number one, number two, number three, and so on and so forth, all the way up to the locations 14 and 15, which are actually on your player board. After workers take their actions, don't remove them yet, leave them in their spaces, they may be counted by certain game effects. They will be all returned back to your player board at the end of the round. Now I'm going to cover every single location in detail. In this first location, the requisition location, players resolve their actions starting with the first worker and then continuing down to the last worker. They gain these requisition points and they gain these points for the common pool, which is this area. This is the symbol for your own personal warehouse. And the worker in the first row also gains this one rosette, which is a token which you place next to your player board. Worker placed in this commissioner space gains two requisition points plus two additional requisition points for each worker in the worker space. In this example, this worker would gain 10 requisition points for the common pool and that worker gains one requisition point for each worker in the worker space. So that's four requisition points for their personal warehouse. You spend these requisition points for the resources from the general supply and the ratios are shown on this player aid card. So if you want to add one flex, you need to spend one requisition point. If you want to add a marble, that costs you three requisition points. You can add additional resources. This is also for one requisition point. And requisition points in this column are always spent on resources, which are then placed to this common pool. When you use the requisition points from this column, you add resources to your warehouse. The capacity of your warehouse is limited. It's only four spaces at the start of the game. You will be able to extend that capacity as we will see in a couple of minutes. Then it is the next worker's turn. This worker would have seven requisition points for the common pool and then two additional requisition points for their own warehouses. 
And in case your warehouse is full, you can spend these requisition points to add resources to the common pool. One last note, as you can see, you may never request magic as the resource from the government. In the second phase, the bureaucracy phase, first player, or basically any player, takes all the cubes from this common pool and drops them into the tower. All the resources from this first phase, the requisition phase, were requested from the government. And now, because of the bureaucracy, you never know what you really get. As you may see, some of those resources remain stuck in this bureaucracy tower, and some resources that were inside the tower previously may fall out, so unexpectedly you may get some resources which you have never requested, or which you have requested in previous rounds. So, whatever falls out into this common pool is available for players for the remainder of the round. The third phase of each round is called loading. Each worker, starting from the first one and continuing to the last one, will choose one of these rail cars available and load it with one to four resource cubes from this common pool. And if there's a commissioner here, they would load it with two to five resource cubes. That commissioner would gain one Rosette token. Then the rail card will be placed to the first available space in this loading area, starting with the space number one at the bottom and continuing to the space number six at the top. At the start of the games, these rail cars are empty, but in subsequent rounds, they may contain some resources. So don't forget that the maximum capacity is six resource cubes. So if you reach the capacity, you may no longer load more resources into the rail card. Then, send it to the nearest available loading space. If the resources in the common pool would run out, you will not be able to load any more rail cars. The location number four is called spiking. All the workers here may add additional resource cubes to these rail cars from the spiking back. If there's a commissioner, that commissioner can add any four resources, except for magic, to that spiking back. Then the worker, which is in the first position, will take the spiking bag and choose three resources plus one resource for each worker in this location. So in this example, it will be four resources. Since the resource cubes have different sizes, you may try to feel the size of the cube before you pull it out. Then each worker, again starting with the first one and continuing to the third one, may choose up to two resources from this supply and add them to any rail cars if that rail car has a capacity. When all workers complete the directions here, add one flex and one lichen to the remaining resources and place these resources back into the spiking bag. The location number five is shipping. Each worker here, again starting with the first one, must ship one of the rail cars from the position one or two and move it to any open dock on any player's player board. So, take a rail car and place it on any open dock space, either on your own player board, or if you want, you can also place it on any open dock of any other player's player board. As you can imagine, that may help, but also hurt the other player. Then move all other rail cars forward, filling in the empty space. And then the next worker must do the same, ship one of the rail cars from position one or two. If there is a commissioner here, that commissioner may choose one of the workers just before that worker is going to ship the rail car, and that worker must ship both rail cars from position one and two. You may ship those two rail cars to one player or to two different players. The location number six is steam generation. The amount of available steam to all players is tracked over here. The first step in this location is to burn all the burnable resources from the common pool. You can see all the burnable resources on this side of the player 8 card, including the amount of steam each resource generates. So, in our example, we have one coal, it's returned back to the general supply, and it generates three steam. Then we have two pieces of wood, which is four additional steam, and then one lichen, which is one additional steam. Marble and steel are not burnable, so they don't produce any steam. Then all workers in this location, starting with the first one, may burn any additional burnable resources from their personal supply. 
Your personal supply or private supply are all the resources in your warehouse and in all your docks. So let's say the red player would decide to burn two additional coal resources. That is another six steam. And then the yellow player may do the same. Then the first player, if they burn resources, they gain one Rosette token. If the worker in the second position burns resources and generates steam, they get two Rosette tokens and the third worker would gain three. Again, only if they actually do burn the resources. At any time when the steam level rises to 15, the rupture occurs, steam drops down to eight, which is also indicated with this symbol, and remains in this position for the rest of the round, even if additional resources would be burned for steam. However, even though the steam may not get higher than eight for the rest of the round, workers here may still burn their resources for steam and get their Rosette tokens. Then the location number seven is not on the game board, it's actually on your player boards. The location is called operate and if you have a worker there, you may operate any number of your inventions. By operating, you will simply follow the text and resolve the effects on those cards. Some of these cards can be used over the course of the entire game. Some of those cards have these operation tokens. This one can be used three times per game. So when you use the card, remove one of those tokens. When you remove the last token, place this card to your own personal discard. In the first round of the game, you will not have any invention cards. In the next couple of minutes, you will see how to get those cards and how to research them. The location number eight is called the Inventors Guild. And here's the place where you can get those invention cards. Each worker here may pay steam. First worker has to pay one steam. Second worker has to pay two steam and the third would have to pay three steam. And then the commissioner here, if there is any, would gain one magic resource for each worker in this location. And then starting with the first worker, each worker may choose one of the available invention cards. Place the card to the left side of your player board face down, as indicated by this symbol. Then the next location is the Elven Embassy. Each worker here may spend a Rosette token and draw two Elven Commissions cards. Take one of your Rosette tokens and put it back into the general supply. Secretly look at those two cards. Keep one of them, again, face down, as indicated by this symbol, and return the other to the bottom of the corresponding deck. You will keep your chosen card face down until you first manufacture and get all the required resources shown on the card. That happens in steps 12 and 14. If you don't have or don't want to spend the Rosette tokens, you don't need to use the worker in this location. Then if there's a commissioner here, that commissioner may spend a Rosette token and gain one magic resource for each worker who spent those Rosette tokens. The next location is trading. Each worker here may trade resources from their personal supply with the general supply using the ratios on the current market card. If there is a commissioner here, each worker who wants to perform the trade must pay one Rosette token to that commissioner. To perform the trade, first you have to sell and then you can buy. When selling, you take resources from your warehouse and from your docks and then you can sell those resources for the resource points, which is basically a sort of a currency. So in this example, one wood is one resource point and mushroom is two resource points. So that's three resource points in total. And then you can spend these resource points to buy resources from the market. Let's say I want three steel resources. Each of them costs one point, so I can afford to get three pieces of steel. You may never buy the same resources you sold this round. And if you would still have any resource points available, so you don't spend them all when buying resources, these resource points are lost. If there's no number next to a certain resource, it means that it cannot be traded. So in this example, steel may not be sold to the market this round. However, it may be bought. On the other hand, wood and flax can be sold to the market, but they may not be bought from the market. Then take all the resources you bought this round and you must place them in your warehouse. So you must have a room available. 
you may never place them in your docks. So when performing this trade, make sure you have enough space available in your warehouse. Next is this research location, number 11. And if you have a worker here, you may do one of the five following actions. You may either research one of your invention cards, or you may buy one of these four improvements for your player board. You may only do one action per round, so you may either research one card or buy one of these improvements, and you can buy these improvements in any order you want. All the cost requirements are printed on the location, and in order to buy the small expansion for your warehouse, you have to pay any two materials. And again, you can use this player aid cards to see that materials are flax, wood, and marble. And in this case, you have to spend two resource cubes. And you can only spend cubes from your warehouse. And as this arrow indicates, cubes from dock number one. So I may spend these two flex resources. In addition to that, you need to spend two points of steam as well. In order to buy the large warehouse, you need to spend three steam and any three materials. Both small and large expansion expand the capacity of your warehouse. Then to build this crane, you need to spend two wood resources and any one additional material cube. So let's say it would be this flex. Now, without the crane, when using the manufacturing site number one, you can only use resources from dock number one or from the warehouse. When using the manufacturing site number two, you can only use resources from dock number two and your warehouse. When you have a crane and you take an action on your player board, you can use resources from both docks and also from the warehouse. And finally, when buying this incinerator, you need to spend three metal resources. So those would be these three steel resources. And this incinerator allows you to produce your own steam when using this manufacturing site one and two. For each one resource cube, you will generate one steam. And if you use this Rosette tokens, if you spend them from your supply, each token generates two steam. I'll talk about that in a minute when I get to the manufacturing. Finally, with this research action, you can research one of your inventions. To research the invention, you have to pay the cost shown at the bottom of the card. In this example, three copper resources. And then you can place the card face up to the right side of your player board, as this symbol indicates, and the invention is ready for you to use. If your new invention card has limited use, which is indicated by this number, Place that many operation tokens on the card, and every time you use that card, remove one of those tokens. In addition to the worker, you may also have a commissioner here in this location, and as you can see on this commissioner space, there is a green magic cube shown, which means you get one magic resource. However, this magic resource can only be spent for this research action this round, and one magic resource counts as one resource or one steam. In addition, when you have that commissioner, you may spend two Rosette tokens and gain one victory point, which is this small white star or additional magic resource. One last note, as you can see, these invention cards can only be used in the seventh step of the third phase, which is operate. Now we move on to number 12, which is manufacturing site number one. If you have a worker there, you may produce goods which are shown on these government cards, government orders, or on your own Elven commission cards. Keep in mind that these are phased down until you first manufacture them. When running this manufacturing site number one, you can only use resources from the warehouse and from the dock number one. When running the manufacturing number two, you can only use resources from the warehouse and dock number two until you get this crane. And then when using the manufacturing sites, you can use any dock. When you need to generate steam, you may use your own incinerator if you have one and that generates points of steam, or you can use this sort of public steam resource. Again, if you use the magic resource, it counts as any one resource cube or one steam. So, each worker may produce one good. Each government order shows one product and three levels of quality of that product. The highest level quality requires these resources, 
the medium quality or the standard requires these resources and the minimum quality requires these ones. So when producing with your worker, choose the product and the quality level. Let's say I will spend two steel resources here, which means I have produced this product at the highest level. And then take the worker from that site and place it on that government card in the respective quality row. Resources are placed back into the general supply. Immediately gain the number of rosette tokens shown on that space. Each product may be completed by multiple players and even with the same quality. When you manage to produce the product on this Elven Commission card, place it on the right side of your player board and if it has a limit of how many times it can be produced, place that many production tokens on the card and of course immediately remove one of those tokens. Then gain the reward shown at the bottom of the card. Later in the game, when you reach that limit, flip the card face down and place it into your own personal discard. If you have your own incinerator and you have produced some steam, at the end of this manufacturing step, you can store maximum two steam tokens on this incinerator. Similar to research, if you have the commissioner here, you gain one magic cube, which can only be used for this manufacturing action. The next location is this accounting location and each worker here may perform two different actions from these four listed on the location. You may spend one marble, gold or beer from your personal reserve and gain one victory point. You may spend one rosette token to gain a victory point or you may spend two rosette tokens to gain three victory points or you may spend any three resource cubes to gain one victory point. If there is a commissioner in this location, each worker must pay one resource, any resource, to this commissioner to take those two actions. In the final round of the game, in order to place a worker in this location, you have to spend one Rosette token. This manufacturing site number two works in the exact same way as the manufacturing site number one, with one difference, if you don't have the crane yet, you may only use the resources from dock number two and from your warehouse. And finally, the location number 15 is end of round scoring. The player with the most completed government orders will gain one rosette as a reward. And completed order is a card where player has a worker. In case of a tie, all tied players gain that rosette token. In this example, we have two players, red player and the black player, who both have completed two cards, so they both would gain one Rosset token. If one player would have two workers on the same card, it would still count as one completed order. Then each player would get two victory points for each completed order, so red player would get four victory points, black player would get four victory points, and pink and yellow would get two. Then for each order which is not completed, so there are no player workers there, each player either has to lose one victory point or two rosette tokens. The fourth phase of each round is a cleanup phase. First, if any player reached 42 victory points, or if this is the last round of the game, so there will be no event cards over here, the game would be over. If not, then perform the following steps. First, place one Rosette token on any incomplete government order. The first player to complete that order in the following rounds will take all the Rosette tokens on that card. Then remove all the completed orders and return all the workers to their owners. All empty rail cars from player boards must be returned to the station at the top of the game board. Rail cars which are not empty may be returned to the station as well, however players can also keep them and they can even change their position. If you decide to return them to the station, they will be returned to the station even with the resources inside those rail cars. Then the first player marker moves to the next player in a clockwise direction and that's the end of the entire round. Then at the end of the game perform the final end game scoring by following the instructions here. In each category, if players would be tied, each of those players would gain one victory point, and then the player with the most victory points at the end of the game is the winner. 
So that's how you play Factory 42. If you have any questions or comments, uh, I will do my best to answer your questions and comments. If you like the series, please subscribe. You can even support the channel on the Patreon page. My name is Branislav Berec. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell and hope to see you next time.